Topping today's news, gun violence continues to plague the nation with four men shot in Western New Providence on Sunday. Government gets court approval to address the growing shantytown concerns, a major cocaine drug bust on Bimini, and the government gives an update on major capital works projects as they improve infrastructure. <laughs> Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. The police have launched a criminal investigation into a quadruple shooting and a stabbing incident. Reports indicating that the shooting of four men unfolded outside a residence in quiet tropical gardens just before 11 p.m. on Sunday. Preliminary reports reveal that two masked males, both of whom were armed with handguns or a handgun, exited a small blue vehicle and discharged gunshots in the direction of the men, which resulted in them being shot. The victims were transported to hospital via EMS personnel and private vehicles, where one remains in serious condition and the others in stable condition. As for the stabbing incident, police say shortly before 2 a.m. on Monday, a 22-year-old male was at a nightclub on West Bay Street when he was attacked and subsequently stabbed multiple times by a group of males unknown to him. The victim was taken to hospital via private vehicle, where up to news time, his condition was unknown. Police are actively investigating these incidents and are appealing to members of the public who may have any information that can assist with their investigation to contact them at 911, 919, or Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS. That's 328-8477. Eviction of residents and subsequent demolition of shanty towns here in the capital and on Abaco can resume following the discharge of the shanty town injunction, which was granted in August of 2018. On Friday, Supreme Court Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson lifted the injunction, which stemmed from a judicial review application brought by shanty town residents in whether their removal was constitutional. The injunction had barred the government from demolishing structures and individuals from building any new structures, but many new structures have been built. On Friday, Prime Minister Philip Davis said the discharge will now allow the government to start the process to correct the issue of shanty towns in the country. The 70-page ruling by Justice Grant Thompson gives the government the authority to take possession, demolishing, or to otherwise lawfully interfere with the applicants, residents, and occupiers' enjoyment of land in shanty towns on New Providence or elsewhere in the Bahamas. In addition, Justice Grant Thompson has also rejected the judicial review application that had been filed by non-profit Respect Our Homes Limited and 177 residents of Shanty Towns. The Prime Minister says he hopes they would not appeal. The official opposition is urging the government to move with a sense of urgency now that a major hurdle has been overcome. FNM leader Michael Pintard is calling on the government to address the immigration crisis, in particularly the unregulated communities, by taking immediate action. Mr. Pintard, in a recent statement, says he notes the judge's reference to the issue being one of national importance. He said the FNM also considered this to be a matter of national importance when it took steps to address the problem in 2018. He said that valuable time has been lost. He goes on to say that on multiple levels, the various unregulated developments violate Bahamian laws, and for the most part, the shanty towns are built on government land, with some being built on private land legally and illegally. Mr. Pentard said that the government must act humanely, but with a sense of urgency to address this crisis. Following Minister of State in the office of the Prime Minister, Miles LaRota, announcing that the Cabinet has made a decision on the increase of the National Insurance Board rates, there have been some concerns from Bahamians that the government is going back on its promise of not putting more taxes on the back of Bahamians. While not wishing to go into details about the situation, Prime Minister Philip Davis says the increase is merely just one of the options that they are looking at. We should not to speak to it because, um, as is my mandate, I continue to say that I'm going to try to resist putting more, uh, more burden on our poor working class. And so we are trying to, be, yes, we have looked at the matter, we understand that we have to do something, and we try to identify exactly what we do. And increasing the rate 
this one of the options that we have Minister LaRoda, while not confirming the cabinet's specific decision on the matter, did say last week that the government will be coming forth shortly with the direction that the National Insurance Board will go with regards to the contributions, rates, and other recommendations that were made in the report, which the executive management team at NIB has recommended to the government, which in their view needs change. During debate on the government's 2022-2023 fiscal strategy report, the parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Public Works and Utilities said when the PLP took office in 2021, they met a terrible situation as it relates to public infrastructure. In this next report, we hear more on the government's plans to tackle many of these infrastructural issues. On Monday, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Public Works and Utilities, Bacchus Roll, reminded that the government's capital expenditure program has allocated $121.4 million in the budget to address a number of infrastructural works they believe are badly needed. He listed the following areas that need attention. Funds are allocated for items ranging from water infrastructure, maintenance of public buildings, roads, bridges, drains, and beautification and maintenance of public spaces. Madam Speaker, when this government came into office in 2021, it meant a dire situation with respect to public infrastructure. To put it mildly, almost no work had been done during the previous four years. We found a situation where roads were deteriorating, docks and airports were not, were not attended, and in general, the, the country's infrastructure had become dilapidated. Mr. Roll then gave more details about some of the major infrastructural initiatives that are already underway and others that will take place throughout the Bahamas. We fast forward to 2023. And as the fiscal strategy notes, we are proceeding with a number of major infrastructural initiatives throughout our nation. A $60 million road development project in Exoma, and included in this project is the provision for water mains in Baratari, Georgetown, and Little Exoma. Additionally, the ministry is about to enter into a PPP for the development of roads in Cat Island and South Elutra. All of these projects are aimed at the enhancement of our public infrastructure, providing and priming the pump for further economic expansion. In addition to much needed improvements to a number of wastewater treatment facilities here in the capital, reliable access to portable water in some family island communities has also been a challenge. Mr. Roll shared the government's goals in solving these issues. With regards to the Water and Sewage Corporations, Madam Speaker, the supply of safe, reliable, and continuous water is our goal. And we have many family island projects ongoing, namely those in Abaco and Eleuthera. From a sewage standpoint, the Water and Sewage Corporation is nearing conclusion of a PPP agreement in the range of $1.8 million to complete works at Malcolm Park Wastewater Treatment Facility. And the Water and Sewage Corporation is in very active discussions for a PPP agreement in the range of $8 million to complete the works of a long, long-standing issue, the Gladstone Road Wastewater Treatment Facility. The South Beach Member of Parliament also revealed that construction has started at the new straw market at Fort Charlotte, with the redevelopment of Fort Finn Castle straw market also being prepared in time for the country's 50th independence celebrations in July. And finally, in this segment, last week, Bacchus Roll, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works and Utilities, along with executives of the Water and Sewage Corporation, returned to Eleuthera to assess and highlight major improvements and upgrades to the water supply systems on that island. In this next report by Destiny Johnson, we hear that Prime Minister Philip Davis joined them on the tail end of that visit and commissioned a new portable water supply system for the community of Russell Island in North Eleuthera. The community of Russell Island 
Lady Luthra has now been provided with portable water. The Water and Sewage Cooperation, WSC, held a commissioning of the $600,000 water supply project on the island on Friday. Prime Minister Philip Davis was the first to turn on the pipe and drink the refreshing portable water from the new pump. Prime Minister Davis says this initiative was long overdue. Too many administrations have dropped the ball in delivering a viable solution for the people of this island. For a number of years, we have seen problem after problem, disruption after disruption. I understand the frustration and anger you have felt while experiencing water shortages. Just like people in Nassau, you pay your fair share of taxes, and you simply want the government to do its job in providing services that work. My administration took this issue seriously from day one. As Prime Minister, I knew we could not allow these changes to continue. We made it a priority to address this issue because there is no way in the 21st century that any behavior should have to live without a clean and stable water supply. Not in the Bahamas, but my government envisions. The water supply project showcases the installation of over 7,000 feet of 4-inch PVC and 3,000 feet of 2-inch PVC water mains, which will service over 100 homes. Minister of Works and Utilities Alfred Sayers, while noting how remarkable it is that after 50 years, some islands are still without water, says water is the most fundamental resource government can provide. And I want to thank the extraordinary team at the Water and Sewerage Corporation. Because within eight, within eight months, to provide 10,000 feet of water main to ensure that this fast developing Russell Island community would receive the portable water that it deserves take took extraordinary commitment minister says note some other improvements scheduled to be made on the island of eleuthera the complete transformation of the road system a massive road redevelopment that our prime minister was uh, speak to and also docks will be rehabilitated so it's a comprehensive infrastructural commitment to the development of Eleuthera. MP for North Eleuthera and Executive Chairman at WSC, Silvanus Petty, expressed his excitement to be able to fulfill his promises to the residents of the island. The next step for the cooperation, according to WSC General Manager Robert Teal, is to provide portable water to Cat Island. He says the letter of acceptance for two desalination plants for New Bight and Bennett's Harbor have been signed and issued to the contractors. He is hopeful that the WSC will have another ceremony ceremony just like this one on the island of Cat Island later this year. For JCN News, I'm Destiny Johnson. Thanks for that report, Destiny. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.